You mentioned uh, contracted services. Um, you know, that's not a salary line item, but it's in lieu of a salary position. And I just would suggest at some point, if, I think you mentioned we might have a contracted services. Someone comes like for two days. I just didn't know if there's an opportunity if Falmouth or Yarmouth had one day, if you could actually hire someone to serve both schools. You know, you have the same person. Those children probably have similar needs each year. And you may actually be able to, you know, provide a better service and actually save dollars. I know this isn't, you know, Dominic's not here, but I just think that may be an area we could pursue. Mm -hmm. Even though you'd be adding staff, you know, when remote comes down, but you're actually saving dollars versus contracting out the the uh, the program. Yep, that's a, that's a good idea. I mean, contracted services do save you a lot a lot of money with examples like that. You know, you're not paying the benefits, for example, and usually those people are you know, in two or three different school systems. And there's some added value to that. You know, they're able to bring some solutions from other places that we might not have considered. David? Just to follow up, I'm not sure if I had, uh, which question you were asking. You're asking that if we share a contracted person, we'll save money, or you, I might have said it's our contracted people we pay per hour. So if we're sharing with somebody, it's not going to give us a savings, because we're only paying them per hour anyways. Um, or are you saying we should shift from salary positions to contracted positions? Uh, I'm just saying we should look at all the options and determine what's the best solution for the school system. I don't know the answer, I'm just saying, I'll, okay. you know, you may be a person there, a CAPE employer, uh, for half a year, or 40%, they're Yarmouth for 60%, and you know, you, may, you actually might have greater continuity, and even though you might pay benefits, you, it's cheaper than contracting out the problem. I don't know the answers, I'm just saying, you know, that's a, something we could look at at some point. And I'm sure we have, but just, as a new school board member, just wanted to see what what we're doing. Other staffing questions? Okay. Um, so then we'll move to the three-year plan. Do you want to give us a quick introduction to that, Ken? Yes, I do. I, um, you know, three-year plans when it comes to school budgets are really crystal balling it, and there's nothing precise in my crystal ball. Um, but for the benefit of the public, uh, what the school committee, school board is considering is not only this year, but also the next two years, particularly when it comes to revenue, uh, because that's part of the story of this budget and it will be part of the story of next year's budget. That federal stimulus money is going away and so the school board needs to be very um, intentional about how it uses revenue not only this year but next year and the year after so that you don't put all of your eggs in one basket produce, you know, a really low tax rate one year only to, you know, ask residents to swallow up a seven or eight, ten percent increase in taxes. So the plan we've provided tries to even, you know, the impact on taxes, maintain what we presently have so that we get through um, the present dismal economic climate in hopes that there'll be a recovery sometime soon, uh, or at least within the next three years, not so. So that's, um, that's sort of the big picture. Um, getting into some of the details, there's $500,000 that's that we presently um, have squirreled away. Uh, it was very smart of the school board last year to do that. Um, so that money's going to go away. And so what we're, we're suggesting is that the Medicare money you have, um, use that to make up for the loss of the federal uh, stimulus money next year. 
you could use all of that Medicare money or a big portion of it this year and, you know, really get the impact on property taxes down even lower than what it is, but then you'd be setting up a real problem in year two. I don't know if you follow all of that or not, but if you look at that Medicare line, you can see we're, we're recommending not using any of it this year and putting $480,000 into year two. Yeah, just to clarify, when, when Ken means this year, to the layperson, he actually means the next fiscal year, not this year. And um, what you really mean is Medicaid, not Medicare, if I understand I'm sorry. correctly. Yes, yes, yes. And next, next year, or next fiscal year, we're actually using jobs funds bills to make up a large part of the shortfall in this year, two and three, that we're really using uh, our ability, uh, 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 some great collection of Medicaid money that we scrolled away, plus some very aggressive collection of Medicaid money in those two years. Yes. Okay. Thanks, thanks for clarifying that. I've got an extra copy you didn't bring. Do I need a copy? Of the three year plan? Yeah. Anybody else? Good. I've got a short one too. I'll make a copy. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, just because I think one thing that will jump out to people is uh, total expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year are really 450000 and then for the 2012-2013, that increases to 760000 Ask me that again, Michael. The, the change in ex uh, the expenditures? Yes. The change this year is 447719 and we estimated, you know, 760 to 770 the next two years. Yes. And is the biggest change in that the, this year we had the contingency fee? What would be the? Uh, it, it, in years two and three, it assumes a two percent increase in salaries, whereas this year we've got a pretty skinny increase okay. in salaries. That's the biggest difference. Yeah, big, okay. It also assumes that we're going to keep spending the levels at current at current levels. So, like in your textbook account, it assumes zero percent, or in paper. It, it assumes zero percent. What it assumes is a very similar budget as what you have this year. You know, just two two years of maintenance budgets. And you can do that in many areas, but you know, like with price of oil and, and things like that, you, you can't do that. So we've built in probably a hundred thousand dollars each year, or eighty thousand dollars a year too, and a hundred thousand for that sort of thing. So it's. It's a fairly realistic look at the next two years, as much as you can be accurate at this point. Yeah. Um, I, Ken, I think, has answered it. I, I had the general questions I was going to ask of Pauline as to, she's increased our projected expenditure budget each year by a certain amount. It was 440000 for next year, 760000 for the year after, and about 770000 for the year after that. The major portion, I understand you're saying, is salary and benefits that we're anticipating going up, which is always true. Mm -hmm. And you also, I also want to know that even though that's 70 to 80% of our budget, did you plug in other increases, because the prices always go up, and what were those increases? Just so the public and I can know that we're being prudent about uh, or realistic, I guess is a better word, about our expenditure increases. Right. Um, over and above the salary increase, I looked at about $85,000 per year added to the salary increase. And what would that compose? Would that be like an increase in inflationary costs for supplies? I mean, how did you come up with that number? Well, I think it's what Ken said. We look at uh, an increase in oil, electricity, or other uh, contracts that automatically increase every year. Do we also include just normal increases in costs of supplies and other other materials that we use because of uh, um, just normal inflation? Yeah, I think I think what we're we're recommending is that you have two more years of a budget like the one you're presently considering. I don't think there's a lot of room um, in school budgets when 
you know, you're losing this much revenue for a lot of increases. So if you get through two years of maintenance budget, then you'll think you'll be back on a pretty normal sort of budget cycle after the 2013-2014 year. But there's not room to fund um, a lot of major improvements and still keep that tax rate down. Um, so I think we're going to have to remain very conservative. I know you've been very conservative for the past three or four years, but I don't see it getting better until the 2013-2014 school, school year. Well, that's helpful. I guess that was the point I was getting at, that really the increase is factored in contractual changes and, quite frankly, inflation. We're not adding programs, we're not adding things. It's just, but I also want to make sure it's enough. So basically what, you're, what we're saying is we're going to stay the same, but we have to build in some numbers for increased, normal increases that happen every year, uh, electricity, oil, cost of supplies, and so forth. But there's no material change other than for lack of a better word, I'll call it inflation or contraction changes. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Other questions on the three-year plan? It's just directional, I guess, longer-term Medicaid for, you know, planning beyond three years. You mentioned it's the, we, we the day, you know, that'll be tightened dramatically. Is that, you know, do we have visibility that may one day be a zero revenue? contributor or is it too far out to tell? I, I, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're thinking $125,000 a year is going to be the norm. Um, I, I think that might even get tighter than that. This is my personal. No science behind that either. But we were getting, you know, quite a bit of reimbursement for things and they have that is what has been tightened up dramatically. We would not be sitting on $480,000 under the present reimbursable schemes. David? Can I follow up a bit on that? I a little knowledge is dangerous, but um, I have a little bit of knowledge about Medicaid. Um, my understanding that we would get reimbursed from Medicaid is different than hospitals. And other things, they, they front end the costs, Medicaid front ends the costs, and then they supposedly do a reconciliation a year or two down the road. We actually don't, and I wish Don was here, but my understanding is that we bill and get paid, they review the bill and then we get paid based on a bill. So it's each year, each month or each quarter, they're reviewing our bills and pay, paying us based on bills, not like hospitals where they simply project what your costs are going to be and pay you based on their estimate. Is that correct? Yes. So the reality when we estimate 125, which is above what we think we get this year, we, it's a fairly safe number because it's based on actual billing and they're actually approving the bill as opposed to what's done with healthcare providers and other areas like doctors and hospitals. They're not just estimating from two years ago, they're actually looking at the bill and then paying us. Yes. And we're assuming that, uh, um, my also my understanding is the 125 we're assuming, we're doing a pretty good job, to Dom's credit, we're getting a very large percentage of Medicaid monies given out to schools in this state. I think we're getting like 80 to 90 percent of what they give to schools. Is that correct? I'm not sure of that. Okay. I thought you'd said that earlier, but... Um, and I appreciate that. I think people should understand that I think this is, I personally think this is a reasonable estimate based, and it's based on this year, this year being literally this fiscal year, is what we think we're going to collect. It may tighten, uh, it may very well tighten, but it's uh, a reasonable projection, and to be perfectly frank, it's not, that, it's a big item, but it's not that big an item in a $22 million budget that if we're off of it, it's going to have a huge impact in future years. Is that correct? Yes. Um, the other thing is that this money is two years old, and uh, is it two years old? Well, only one right now. Two years. It's two years right now, so you wouldn't be you, you wouldn't be using it until you're know, three years old. So it seems like if it was going to be subject to any change, we would certainly know by then. 
but we are actually in years two and three using them a bit earlier than waiting two years. Isn't that correct? I think it will still year, be two years. Year two, the 480,000 will be three years old. Right, but year, 